Love me some lemons. I'm gonna try a teeny bit, teeny bit. Ready? Oh. Oh, fuck. Hi, I'm Lish, I'm a professional chef, and this is a $226 roast chicken dinner. Hi, I'm Lorenzo, and I'm a home cook, and these are my $18 roast chicken ingredients. Dush! I got it! Could I keep the balsamic? Okay. Okay. Well, at least I have a chicken. <laughs> Bird? Chicken? You are a chicken. Chicken? <laughs> Yikes. I was planning to make a roast chicken au jus with fingerling potatoes and bitter greens. I had some exquisite ingredients to work with. Giannon? Dannon? I had a whole Janone chicken bought fresh from one of my favorite local butchers. Which is taken prisoner. <laughs> What's happening here? Which I was gonna spatchcock. Lucky you guys, I've never done it, but I will today. <sighs> and then dry brine using preserved lemon and thyme leaves. The extra chicken bones were going straight into a stock made with extra virgin olive oil, bay leaf, thyme, and white wine. Alcohol content. No, it's for cooking which I was gonna use to make a delicious love-filled jus. All served with some crispy roasted fingerling potatoes and topped with fennel pollen, the magic. Used by gourmet chefs. <laughs> well, you might wanna return this then. <laughs> All plated on a bed of three types of radicchio with fresh basil and drizzled with a very special aged balsamic vinegar. With Lorenzo's recipe, I have simpler ingredients, stuff that you would typically find in your local grocery store or your pantry. Whole chicken, lemon, rosemary, chicken broth, flour, butter, russet potatoes, and garlic. These ingredients might be simpler, but I have full faith that we can use technique to make them even better. If I had to guess, these would probably cost about $20. All right, wasn't too far off. Let's say $200-ish. Wow. Fancy smanchy patanchy right there. Chicken, brine, just the names of what they are, but no GPS. Well, my biggest inquiry is this guy. The roast chicken has a cousin or it has an allergy called spatchcock. <laughs> chicken. Spatchcocking is basically... Spatchcocking is basically removing the backbone from the bird and opening it up and flattening it. I'm sure that will be my very first question to Rose before she gets tired of me calling. <laughs> Hi Rose, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I am once again in trouble. So I'm a little bit on the nervous side. Is it just literally me doing the spine or is there any crazy stuff I have to do? So first thing you wanna do is take your chicken and you wanna put it breast side down. What you wanna do is snip along the back, oh. along one side and then a crunchy snip along the other side okay. and take it out and put it aside. You're gonna make a stock with that. It's oh. delicious. Okay, sure. Once you have the back snipped out, you can kind of open it up a little bit and you're gonna look okay. for what's called the keel bone. So you're gonna take a super sharp knife and just cut along the cartilage a little bit okay. and then just take your finger or your knife and cut the rest Lovely. of that cartilage section and remove it. Okay. That's it. So then you're gonna flip the chicken over and just press it down and wait till you see how much surface area it takes up. It's a really nice way to cook poultry. Okay. Let us get to spatchcocking. I guess we just cut along this. This is the spine. I can feel it. You can see. I can see the neck here. Okay. Okay. Well, that was easy. There's another breast bone. I forget what it's called. What's it called? The keel bone. It's the little piece of cartilage that connects the two breasts on the bird. That, I find, actually makes it easier to carve when everything is said and done. I see it, and I'm supposed to be able to just cut around it or something. I don't want to cut it in half. Aha, aha, aha. I can feel it. <laughs> How rude. <laughs> Come on now, I can do this to heck. You've had to, oh. Sorry if it looks like I'm murdering this. Farewell. I'm gonna flip you over. Clear! 
There are multiple benefits to spatchcocking. One, you get to make a sock out of the bones. Two, you get extra crispy skin. Three, you actually eliminate cooking time. And four, it's easy to carve, so you can take it to the table and cut it up in no time. I like this technique. Chicken is spatchcocked. Lorenzo was nice enough to give us some good ingredients to work with for our roast chicken, including butter. But how can you make butter better, you ask? Compound butter. He also provided lemons and rosemary. So we're gonna take that lemon zest and chop up some rosemary, add it to the butter and season it up, and make a super flavorful rub. I am all set up to make a dry brine. I'm gonna use preserved lemons. Wow, that smells like lemonade. Basically, I'm supposed to zest this. I'm gonna grind up the outside portion. I'm gonna try a teeny bit, teeny bit. Ready? Oh. <laughs> Pardon me. That is salty as heck of a tooch. Okay. Blech. Putting in this food processor. I love this thing. I love thyme. Of course, we need salt. We need salt for a dry brine. So Lorenzo was gonna use these lemons just by having them and shoving them in the cavity, right? We're gonna double down. So we are going to quarter one. Boom, that's ready for inside the hoo-ha. Now we're gonna take the second one and we're gonna slice it. So this is going to become a bed for our chicken to sit on. It's gonna create this beautiful lemony gravy. There's a lot of butter in here, so you need that acid to cut through it. So these guys are gonna be the magic touch. Okay. All right, let's put this into a bowl. It smells like lemonade. I'm guessing that he was gonna put this inside the cavity of the chicken. We're gonna roast it first and then squeeze it into the gravy so that you add a little bit of viscosity and sweetness to the gravy. Cut off like the top third of the garlic. Grab about a 10 inch piece of aluminum foil. Set your garlic right in the middle and we're just gonna pull it up a little bit. Drizzle it with like two tablespoons of olive oil. Some kosher salt, peel this up. So this is gonna go into the oven with our chicken, and when it's done, it's gonna be all of the things that we're looking for in a delicious roasted garlic. We have created a dry brine, and I'm gonna massage it in. Massage, massage. I'm gonna get inside here. Whatever's left, we'll rub some more. Wow, very fragrant. And I'm gonna put you into the bag. I'm gonna let this brine for a little bit. We'll be back. So now it's time to prepare our chicken. First and foremost, we are gonna make that bed of lemons in our pan. I'm just gonna lay a couple of them down. I am still married, but I did take my ring off because I will be working with raw chicken now. And so you wanna be smart and safe, right? Make sure to get out any of that beautiful pink juice that comes out of a cryovac chicken. First and foremost, we are going to dry it very well with paper towel. Dry bird equals brown bird. Hello, fingerling potatoes. It's a simple slicing it in half, which is easy. If we want to get a nice uh, char on them, that's why we do this. Now, we're going to season it with salt. On the outside, on the inside, stand her up. Let it rain in there. Don't forget about the oyster, that beautiful succulent piece of meat right at the bottom of the thigh there. You want to build that flavor, and salt is such an important building block when you're actually cooking anything. I'm also not seasoning this with pepper. It's because Lorenzo didn't give me any. No, it's, <laughs> it's because I don't prefer to cook with pepper unless it's intended to be tasted. With this chicken, no need for pepper. If you love it, finish it with a little freshly cracked black pepper at the end. Now, you're gonna separate. <laughs> the skin from the breast and from the thigh over here. I don't use a spatula for that step because a spatula, you're not gonna know if the skin is starting to tear or go, right? You wanna be able to feel it. I'm gonna put them back in the bowl. So let's dress them. About a tablespoon of olive oil. Wow, this is a beautiful, beautiful olive oil. I am going to dress it with a little bit of salt. Now, big dollop of compound butter. We are going to get that right under the skin, okay? And then you can actually use the skin to kind of press it and massage it around. This is how we're gonna guarantee that moist meat. Isn't she pretty? Yes. <laughs> so these wings flap around, the tips are gonna burn because they're just exposed in a high temperature oven. Well, we're gonna push those little wing tips underneath the shoulders of the bird, basically. And now you have a bird who's reclining on the beach. See how nice that is? Fingerlink potatoes are prepped and we're going to bake in the oven with 
the chicken. We have our well-seasoned bird. We're gonna take about three pieces of our quarters of lemon. We're just gonna shove them in the cavity and we're gonna close the skin in and around that, right? And then we're gonna put it on our little bed of lemon and we're gonna get it roasting. Before we actually cook the chicken in the oven, we must sear it. We are going to pat dry this chicken that has been brining for quite some time. So we're gonna use a generous amount of oil. Let's tie her up. So I take one of the ankles, go around her once, bring the other leg close to it and cross it so that it's like she's sitting properly on a porch and swing all the way around, right? Now here's a little trick of the trade. When you tie a shoe, right, you go once. If you go twice, and pull tight, it actually doesn't let itself go. All right, so there's our bird, all tied up and ready to go. Now, if you're wondering, this is not chocolate. <laughs> it's actually the brick. To weight down the spatchcock chicken, just so it's nice and flat, the oil is hot enough. Let's see. Okay, so it's time. Brick. <laughs> That's nice. The drums and thighs are definitely touching the surface. I'm leaving it on high. I still want this hot. Uh, let's go ahead and use the other one. Why not? I'm definitely not touching it, although I want to. I want to check on it. Let's be patient and let's do its thing. I poured my potatoes into my roasting pan. It cuts side down, I guess, to get that nice sear on the bottom too. I'm gonna put my bricks down here for a sec. We've done a good job. We have not touched you. I'm gonna give you a few more seconds. Why? Because I like browning food. Let's do it like this. That's pretty. You're pretty. Chicken's in the pan. I'm married again. Let's roast her at about 425 for approximately an hour-ish. Not only do we have the olive oil that has now been flavored with the juices of this lovely chicken skin, let's put it to work right here. I'm gonna coat my beautiful fingerlit potatoes with this oil. And our garlic is gonna go right alongside that chicken for about 40 minutes. I think I'm gonna save these little yummy crunchy bits. I think I'm gonna deglaze it and I'm gonna use it for the jus, the sauce. You are ready to go in the oven. We got a 450-ish oven. You're in for 30 minutes. So Lorenzo gave me russet potatoes. I'm assuming that he was gonna bake them because they're delicious baked, but we're gonna one-up the game and we're gonna make pom Anna, a layered dish of potato. It's just, in and of itself, simple, sophisticated beauty. So we are gonna take the ever intimidating Japanese mandolin and we are gonna slice these potatoes very thin. So we're gonna keep going here. Now this is where it starts to get intimidating for people. So I go to about there and I stop. Interesting fact, we actually call a Japanese mandolin in most kitchens the Ben Reiner because it's the brand of the Japanese mandolin. We are going to get our pan nice and hot here. Remember that compound butter that we made earlier? We are going to add Add half of what we reserved into our pan. My bubbles are going and we're gonna start to build. So we're gonna start around the outside of the pan here and just tightly shingle all the way around the outside. You have this lovely fan. So this is one layer. We are going to keep building. So we have the first two layers done. We are gonna season with some salt and then we keep going. However many layers you get out of those two potatoes, that's just fine. You want all that contact with the heat. I'm gonna turn it up to about medium-ish and cover it. Let it go for about five minutes. So we press down on the potatoes, the top layer is seasoned. We are just gonna dollop the remaining butter right on top. The top butter starts to kind of baste it almost and just adds flavor from, from the bottom and the top. It is that time to make the stock. I need to heat up some olive oil. Pan's heated up. Let's uh, go ahead and put all these things in. Beautiful aromatics right there. Sweeten it up a little bit with a carrot. At this time, I can pretty much put you in. That'll brown nicely. This smells delicioso. I just have to show you real quick. I love that. That to me, this charring browning, that means flavor, flavor. I think I can add the rest of my herbs. My fresh bay leaf, a couple sprigs of beautiful, Fresh thyme, oh, that's so good. And let's do some deglazing. Ah, and 
let's do about half a cup. This has been deglazed. I love getting all those brown bits up. It's time to get some water in there. And I'm gonna pour all this in. I'm gonna turn up the heat and I'm gonna add a little bit more salt. One, two, and tush! <laughs> That's my good luck. I need all the luck I can get, you guys. This has been about 30-ish minutes and we start basting every 15 minutes at this point. All right, she's looking good. Let's send her back in. Okay. Stock is looking good, smelling good, and I am going to pour and strain this beautiful concoction into my bowl. Voila! And we've got a beautiful rich broth. The star of the show for the jus. All right, this has been about another five minutes, so we're just gonna slide her onto a plate. So let's make sure, double check, there's no resistance when the tip of the knife goes in. And there you have it, our palm anna. Okay, so the chicken is almost ready, but let's start with the jus here. The jus that you make, take your stock. You're gonna wanna reduce it. So boil it for a little while until it gets a little bit thicker. It's not quite gonna coat the back of a spoon. It's gonna be a little looser than that. But then you're going to reduce it and it's going to be a rich, delicious, super flavorful jus that you're gonna serve alongside this beautiful dish. That's lovely, that's really good. A little salt is always good. The jus looking really good. I, I think it's time to go get the chicken. Oh wow, this looks absolutely amazing. We've got some juices flowing, so ooh, yes. Let's look at this, and that's a beautifully roasted potato. Gorgeous, browning on the edges, and that's why we had it flipped over, aha, aha. So my jus looking great. I'm gonna let my chicken rest a little bit longer, then I'll carve it up. Ready to go. Our chicken should be just about perfect, so let's head to the oven and check it out. Isn't she a beaut? Look at that. Oh, can't help but lube her up just one more time. It doesn't get better than this. So we've got the tongs on the ankles and a fish spatula underneath. So our chicken's out of the oven and we're letting it rest. So now we're on to our gravy. We have our drippings, which include all of that compound butter and just sift into our pan drippings here. And it's different from a jus in the fact that we're just thickening it with a little bit of flour. We're scraping up some of the bits from the bottom. Now we are going to take a little bit of that chicken stock. We are going to just add maybe half a cup, two thirds of a cup. Let's bring this guy to a little gentle simmer. So we have our beautiful roasted garlic that we took out of the oven at about 40 minutes. And this is the fun part. Pull out all of those soft caramelized cloves. And we're gonna take this beautiful garlic mash. And we're gonna whisk this into. And this is gonna add that deliciousness. So gravy's looking great. We are ready to carve up this bird and plate it. It is time to cut up this chicken. First, let me cut it in half. I'll definitely go through the breast. I don't want to disturb the beautiful crispy skin that's developed. I'd like to flip this over. That way I can kind of find an easy entryway here to slice without hurting the chicken. See what I did there? So, so far, it's been so easy to kind of cut and separate this. And thanks to it being spatchcock, that is definitely the reason. I'm going to place it all the parts. Look at that beautifulness. There's a phrase, it knocks the man, which means like, I was gonna say Walang Jing and Nox Naman. It's kind of like, like, looking good. <laughs> we have three beautiful things of radicchio. Pretty, very, very pretty. And this really nice looking thing, I'm gonna add some, a bunch of basil actually. Next, I get to add you finger link roasted potatoes. And see these juices here? I think we're gonna add a little bit. Look at this, you guys. We are not wasting any flavor. I'm gonna toss it with my hand. Well, one hand and one spoon. Sea salt flakes, flaky salt. Wow. That looks nice. We'll do it a little bit more, it doesn't look too ah! <laughs> All right, so it's time to plate. We have our fancy potatoes here. Potatoes on a palm anna. And give these a quick quarter. So that everybody gets a pizza slice. <laughs> So those layers make a delicious soft interior with the crunchy brown exterior. Let's arrange it onto this beautiful platter, shall we? Because we are serving this, we want things to be pretty. 
Wow, talk about colorful. This is really just picture perfect. I will be doing this again. Chef Lish, thank you. I, I haven't met you yet, but I'm already thanking you. <laughs> All right, then we have our chicken. She's rested. She's looking good. Let's take off our legs. You just, the fun thing about a chicken is that it tells you where to cut. Juicy, do you see all these juices running? So you're following along, right along the thigh. You see the little pockets, the pocket of butter that you shoved in there earlier? Oh. These potatoes are just packed with flavor. You can see how beautiful, crispy, and golden it is. And we're gonna just put a few little pieces of rosemary down here. We have a thigh, we have a leg. The wing, again, you can follow that joint and pop it. Remember, this takes practice, so be patient with yourself. Let's get a little balsamic in there. This balsamic vinegar is aged for 10 to 30 years, and then you have to actually change it from barrel to barrel every year as it reduces. Very, very fragrant, very potent. It takes on different flavors from each barrel, just building this complex, beautiful, sexy, mouth-feel-rich blast of love. Oh, wow. I could just eat that with that. So, chicken, how are you? Thigh, drum, I love black pepper. I love a lot of it. We put the rosemary down on the plate so that you have a little pop of color, right? You eat with your eyes first. You can tuck some slices of lemon in there if you want. The sky's the limit here. Except for me, who only got Lorenzo's ingredients, huh? Fennel pollen. Oh, it smells so licorice -y. This makes it fancy. I can smell licorice coming off of it. Fennel pollen, the magic. This is looking so good. This platter looks absolutely beautiful, but I can't wait to serve myself a plate. Juicy, crispy. I just wanna get this dunked into you. Oh my God. Chef Liz, you rock. <laughs> you know what you're doing. Beautiful skin, get a little of that gravy. Mm. It's like a warm hug. Mm. Beautiful roast chicken dinner. I can't wait to see what Chef Lish did. Hello, Lish. The famous Lorenzo. <laughs> Lorenzo? Yes. Stunning. Really? Stunning. Really? You eat with your eyes first. All the colors, the delicious looking skin, extra crispy, <laughs> the jus that you just want to dunk it in, right? I'm telling you, I was very proud of it. <laughs> it's amazing. The potatoes are fancy, schmancy, but chancy. <laughs> Lorenzo? Yes. I'm gonna dive in. Oh, goodness. Are you ready? Dive shallow. <laughs> I mean, it looks juicy. It looks I mean, like you a nice can already, piece. yeah. You, you know how to put a fork together. Yeah? Oh, you're not choking on <laughs> You're not choking on it. It was fun doing it. I just hoped it showed like in the end flavors. It's delicious. May I dive into this masterpiece because I have a feeling every single bite is gonna be fantastical. Please do. Oh my God. Yeah? Is it just my ingredients? Just your ingredients. So the rosemary and lemon, the zest. <laughs> I mean, those the lemons we used here, it was just. The preserved lemons, had you ever worked with them before? I tasted it and never have. Yeah. It actually smelled like a, a lemonade. Yeah, so I it thought does. it was going to be sweet. Oh, no. It. <laughs> yes, oh, yes. no. Yes, we found that out. I hope I get to see that reaction. Oh, oh I hope so. <laughs>